Hey everyone, it's TT. Uh, coming at you with a complete king's guide. It is my third time being queen. Um, first time in 798, so thank you everyone. That was really fun. Um, it is a couple hours to the next KVK where we will choose our next king. And I thought it would be a good idea to... Um, make a king's guide for anyone that is new to being a king or just kind of interested in what all of the um all the benefits that are available to um uh, being a king. So to start uh at the be at the end of KVK once you've captured your throne um the king title will be free. So then you're R5, or if you are R5, you can assign king, and you do that by going to the kingdom settings. Then once you are crowned king, you can um, change the kingdom name <laughs> and you can change the kingdom flag to whatever and you can change the kingdom castle. That can all be done in the kingdom settings. You can change any of these items every 24 hours while you're king. Something else you have access to when you're when you're a king is the kingdom message board. So that you can go to your great hall. This is where you'll find all of the skills and buffs for your kingdom. You can also see the kingdom name and the whoever the king is. But the message board over here this is kind of a stationary message that our kingdom has up all the time, but if I were to change it, let's just add a heart. Then press OK, and you press change, and then it notifies everyone on the Great Hall with a little red mark that it's been updated. So they'll see that. One of the biggest responsibilities of being king is assigning the kingdom packs and titles. Not so much titles because that's a little easier, but those packs are so important in lunar kingdoms and in solar kingdoms. You have one conqueror pack, five defender packs, and 15 royal support packs. Those packs do differ based on lunar or solar, and what you get in those packs, but what um, doesn't change is if you take another kingdom, you get double the amount of packs you can pass out, and if you take two kingdoms, plus your own obviously, then you get triple. So that's always nice, you get more to pass out. So in order to assign a pack, I've already assigned all of mine from a couple weeks ago. So I'm just going to use my neighbor here, Peep, She's one of my good friends. So if I were to give her a pack, if I had any to give, I would click on her stronghold and then click titles, click royal packages. I would click the pack that I want to give her and then it would confirm. You can also give yourself a pack and I had trouble the first two times I was um, I was queen figuring this out, uh, and I didn't, I didn't give myself a pack, which is fine, but, um, if you do give yourself a pack, you would click on your castle, go to my profile, and then you want to go over to more info, and that's where you can assign yourself a pack. You click on that little, um, package there, 
and do it the same way, uh, assign the pack. So another benefit to um, ha well capturing your own throne and also being king is the ability to give out titles. So you go to Avalon, titles, and you have knights and fools. So this is my knights, uh, well, my round table, <laughs> um, but the first title here is the humility title, and you can go through each of the titles. They'll, they'll all give different benefits. So that one is construction, research, and troop training. There's, um, there's troop attack, there's march capacity, and there's a, even a healing title. And then in the fool's titles, we have debuffs. So you're going to have, um, you know, your debuff for construction research and troop training. Um, you have troop mar march speed debuff. So you can pass those out as you see fit. With these, with these titles, they have um, you can keep them on the people you you give them to um, all week or all two weeks if you want to. But they um, once you assign them, they do have a twenty four hour cooldown before you can assign them again. So um, some of these will be useful for. Uh, different events that are coming up and people may ask for them. Um, so if you time it right, you can utilize the same title within a um, within a reset twice. So you know set it about a few hours before um, the reset that they need it and then you can move it to the next person before the next reset after that 24 hour cooldown. But let's just give my friend Peep here one of these titles because it's the last few hours. So I'm going to give her, um, let's give her Snowman's. So if you want to change the title, you just click on the person. Let's go back here. You just click on the person, click on titles, and then click on the title that you want to give them. It will cancel the um, title for the other person and then you just click it again and a point. There she is and there's that cooldown. When you take another kingdom, your kingdom taxes the other kingdom and the resources that are collected by your kingdom from the other kingdom go into the treasury. So you go to your treasury here. This is the amount of resources that have been collected by your kingdom from the other kingdom and it happens automatically. You don't have to do anything, but um, you can go ahead and we'll just use peep again. When you allocate resources, uh, and you can do this at any time. Even if you don't have another kingdom, you can allocate resources if your kingdom has collected them previously. So we'll just go to allocate. There we go. And you just press allocate and it sends it. Super easy. So now we'll talk about the skills and the um, buffs for the kingdom. First are the skills. Now these are pretty cool. Okay, so the first one here, I am, I'm just gonna go over skills first and then I'll go over buffs. But um, the first one here is you can just exchange royal coins for gold. And I completely forgot to use this both two weeks, but you can get about 500? No, 600 gold a day. <clears throat> the next one is Force Teleport. This one removes any city from the des designated coordinates that they're at and will randomly teleport them. So to give you an example, I'm just going to go in and teleport our Relic Holder 
because that's easier to see. So she's over there. What you do is you go to Great Hall, click on the Force Teleport, and you can use this once a day. So you use, click on the Stronghold, it'll give it a little highlight, and then you cast the spell. So now she's gone, and you go back to the Relic Map, you can see she's in Oblivion, or just not on the map, until she logs in again. The next skill is an attack ban, and um, I'm going to skip that one and go to Eagle Eye, because uh, I don't want to attack ban anyone that, um, well, not yet anyway, but um, we'll go to Eagle Eye and we'll just look for my, my farm. So this allows you to find any stronghold that's on the map. So, like with um, the relic holder that I ported, you would not be able to find her because she's not on the map. There is a two hour cooldown, but you can use it uh, five times a day. So, we'll just type in my farm name. Tasty Taco. There she is. So, we found my farm. Now we'll go back to the force teleport, or sorry, <laughs> the attack ban, and um, this will prevent a lord from attacking um, within a certain period of time. So um, there's a two hour cooldown, and I believe the attack ban is only for an hour. I'm like 90% 90, 90 sure on that. It's at least an hour. But we'll go ahead and use it on my little taco here. So you can see it's flashing, so that means you selected it and you just cast the spell. Oh, there you go. It's an hour. <laughs> so that's it for the um, skills that's accessible to a king. Um, now we'll talk about the, um, the kingdom buffs. So. Uh, first one I want to touch on, and I want to talk about these in the order that most kings that I've noticed will set them off in. So we'll go first to the Guided Recovery. The Guided Recovery um, reduces the cost of healing uh, troops in your city and alliance hospitals. So that uh, means resources and those those coins that you get for in the new alliance hospital. So this um, I can actually set this off now and it will help us during KVK. So I'm actually going to do that because once the buff is started, um, it lasts for 1,440 minutes, which is 24 hours. There is a cooldown on it, which is about seven days long, 168 hours is about 7 days, so you can set it off um, once a week while you're king, but um, so what I did is I set it off right after KVK, and then we didn't have any events like raid or anything, so um, I could save it for this KVK, so I'm going to go ahead and use it, and you'll find that up here in the buffs area. Okay, next one. So really you can use um, the guided recovery to your discretion, but what I have noticed is um, a lot of kings will follow the trend of the raid week, even if it's not raid week. So first day is gathering. So on Monday reset, you'll set off the Bountiful Kingdom, and um, this will again last for 24 hours and have a week-long cooldown. So that just boosts gathering speed. So Monday reset, Bountiful Kingdom. Tuesday reset um, and, you know, day two of raid event or gold, gold event, whatever you call it, is 
um, building and researching. So we have two skills, age of development, again, last 24 hours, which is uh, increases construction speed, and then land of learning. So age of development and land of learning. And you can use these again, um, they have got a seven day cool down, so you can use them um, twice within your two week reign. Day three doesn't really have any, um, well in gold, gold event, doesn't really have any buffs that you can use. There's no like monster benefit or buff because um, day three, which is Wednesday reset, it goes to um, it goes to killing monsters and barbarians. So most kings won't set off a skill on that day. So day four and five, or um, Thursday reset, Friday reset, are troop training. And um, I've noticed, at least in the last two or three shop or reduction events for Lunar Kingdoms, um, they have coincided with um, raid days. So uh, the training boost will be happen on usually Friday, and the um, construction research day of shop event will um, almost always happen on Tuesday. So it's, it's good to um, keep that in mind so you can utilize the buffs correctly. So going to um, the troop buffs, there are three different buffs and they all have their own, own time limits. So um, what we have found out, this one, okay, the rapid training here that has a two week cooldown this one is for um, retraining troops that were lost in the most recent Excalibur, Excalibur battle at a 300% buff. So this one you can only set once while you're king. And um, I've noticed just by talking to other kings, um, depending on how hard the most recent KVK was, they'll either set it off on... Um, the Thursday reset after KVK or the following week. If it's not a particularly hard KVK and there's no real big events like sh shop event or raid event um, during uh, the first week, then they'll wait for the second week to set this off so people can get the most benefits and save their speeds up, their troop speeds. The next troop buff is the recruitment drive. This one you can set off uh, once a week and this buff will last for 48 hours. This one just reduces the training cost for your troops. Uh, it does have a, a set amount of powers. Um, it will limit how much, uh, how many troops are uh, at a discount. The last troop training buff is the troop surge. So the troop surge increases your training speed, um, but what's cool about this one is that it lasts for a full week. That's 10,080 minutes. It will last for a full week. So you set it off as soon as you capture Avalon and then set it again the following week and you've got that 30% buff um, during your whole reign. There's one other skill that allows you to have it going during your whole reign, and that's Prosperous Land. This one will only unlock when you've captured another kingdom, but it gives you um, it gives you a benefit or a boost to um, when you're recharging, you get an extra five percent gold. And it lasts all week, so set it off as soon as you're done with KVK, and then again the following week, and you've got it going during your whole reign. 
So while this may be a helpful guide, um, you are your own king or queen. So you can, um, you can do all of those things that I just went over however you'd like, but I do hope that this helps. Last couple of things I wanted to go over were, um, first the throne status. This is where, of course, you'll see who's king. Um, you can also see the history of kings within your kingdom. Um, but what's cool is you've got your war history on all five of your buildings. You can see from your most recent KVK who sent troops to each building. So this kind of helps in determining who may get those packs. And lastly, we have a lunar benefit here. I don't know why solar doesn't have a king's horn, but they don't. Um, but in lunar, we have a king's horn. They are our king's loudspeaker. They can be seen throughout all lunar kingdoms. So you can talk to other kings, um, but people that are not kings cannot utilize them. They can buy them, which is weird, but they can't use them. So you just purchase, and then you can go to your bag, there it is, and you use, and then you just type whatever you want to say. So I already typed something out earlier. So. <laughs> Um, we had Kingdom 791 for our last KVK, and we have them again. We also paired with them in Nethers, so I'm just saying hi to our new friends. <laughs> so you press OK, and then send. And there you go. That can be seen throughout all kingdoms. So I hope this guide is helpful to all of the new kings or um, returning kings. And if you have any questions or if you um, think of something that I left out, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.